Heute im Aufnahmezustand Coco Rosie. Zwei New Yorker Schwestern, denen der Ruf der Unberechenbarkeit vorauseilt. Uns bescheren sie mit den Rajasthan Roots, dem französischen Beatboxer Tess und dem japanischen Multiinstrumentalisten Tak ein wahrhaft multikulturelles Ereignis, das zum Schweben verleitet. Es gibt einen Gott und er heißt Musik. Sit high, I try to smile, pistol 
we've recorded here before, years ago, um, which I did not know. <clears throat> when I arrived, I thought there was something familiar about the place. We recorded R.I.P. from the last record, Grey Oceans. I got locked outside to it, and it was like January, I think. <laughs> that was pretty cold. <laughs> Very nice. Where's your amp? More important stuff. Where's my amp? <laughs> exactly. Where do we plug in? <laughs> studio especially we have no sense of where we are in the world so it's only what's in the studio that's having a real effect on the situation and then touring we completely ignore the itinerary and enjoy the fact that we're in a new country every day and Sierra and I in particular have no idea where we are um, most of the time and that's something we really enjoy I think that's one of our favorite things about touring is like letting letting that responsibility go to someone else and just getting in for the ride. In the studio, it's often just Sierra and I, or maybe one other musician, but uh, that's about it. This was unique to all of our experiences and pleasurable. <laughs> uh, we met uh, in Abu Dhabi, in the King's Palace in Abu Dhabi. <laughs> it was an art festival over there, and uh, they were playing five minutes, we were playing five minutes, but since uh, they had to choreograph it so well, we were there for a week. So we had a lot of time to talk, interact, and the minute we played to together, it seemed very natural. And uh, this is the interesting thing about the music when we're making it together. It's, I don't even know what genre to call it, because if we're folk music of Rajasthan and uh, they're folk of, uh, of America, the, what we're making together is just uh, something very unique and uh, very special. I, I don't think we can coin it even. Uh, and uh, this has uh, been kind of uh, a few months now that we're playing uh, together as a band and it's just been an amazing journey. <laughs> yeah, it was Adi and his energy and his love and flower power that stayed in our memory and led us to where we are now.
And then the lights came on, and the lights came on. The Our mother has a very, has a beautiful voice and sang to us a lot when we were children. Like, wrote and sang prayers to us every night when we were children. And our father is really into wild drum circles. So that's our two sort of heritage music ex musical experiences. Were you in a class where someone's humming and the teacher's just like, who's that? And then it stops, and then a couple minutes later, like, it'll start again. Um, <clears throat> I was that person. <laughs> I got in trouble all the time, even at home, because my mother was a single parent and with four children, and we lived in one room. And she had to create some divisions, but it was one big open room. And, you know, I don't know, imagine how she felt if there's someone always singing. What's God's name? We don't like listening to music. Apart from jogging or um, cleaning. We're kind of available for writing so much of the time that there's no space to put to you know play music. It's like we're more just available and listening. And it really takes silence for that. Um, I'm kind of like really strict when I'm in my living space about not having music. It's like I have my typewriter out and I like to be able to write whenever I feel like it. And if I'm like being bombarded with music and lyrics, then I'm just not available. And melodies, do you ever listen to a song and then you're humming the tune the rest of the day? That, you know. It can be a disaster. <laughs> what does God's name? What 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 God's name?
Satyr swagger, drunken donkey, lips disjointed. Your choice is a penny zoo, Mexican pony, fucked up shoes. Maybe the 10 first show I was going on stage, I didn't even know their music, I didn't even listen to the music, and they were like on stage, okay, this song is gonna be like that, so can you make a beat like this? And I was like, okay, let's do that. And then on stage, it, it was getting like that. And you know, sometimes it's pretty rare to find people you're working with and it's matching. But don't you think we rush a little bit? I, I think we rush a little bit, but yeah? it's okay. I think. But I think yeah, maybe I went a little bit yeah, fast. I went with the emotion, I think it was good. I think it's working pretty well. It's a weird mix, but when you get used to it, it's like not weird at all. It's like, oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> You know, I'm always inspired working with them. They're, it's the art is the first, most important part. And a lot of musicians get more caught up on the technical part, you know? Just like, get hung up on musicianship and the technical side. And I think to them, it's art first. And that's really inspiring, but it's challenging, you know? So you have to, a lot of last minute changes or improvisation, you know? So, yeah, that's a big part of it, for sure. I recommended Takuya, who I work with in a couple bands in New York City. We both live in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, and we play in a couple avant-garde jazz bands, and we do a lot of dub reggae stuff together, and he and I work with Lee Scratch Perry together. It's all part of the spirit of Coco Rosa, you know, being able to adapt and try some new musical directions. I love it, yeah. More people from all over the world to meet <clears throat> people from different countries, different continents in the world. That's kind of big reason why I play music. Yeah, that's why I came out from Tokyo and live in the States. That's that's main reason, actually, to play with the different people. I grew up listening to rock and roll and everything and pop music. But at some point, I stopped 
<clears throat> when I was like junior, 15, 16, I was really getting into more jazz, free jazz. I'm always interested in the new stuff because my blood, you know, Japanese people are into like something like, oh, that's, what's this, you know? So that keeps going on and I'm, I'm still learning.
The song is saying Allah, which means God, who, which means everywhere, all around. And so the God is in the whole universe and the spiritual music is, does not uh, follow any religion. So this is the kind of music which uh, we play from Rajasthan. With the kind of instruments which we have there, and there are many, many instruments, you can create so many different styles of music. So we're very open, and that's why we've always collaborated with as many people as we can from different parts of the world. So we can always gain something from their culture or from their uh, uh, you know, musical creations. And um, so we're very uh, flexible to collaborate and to uh, experiment. The turbans which we wear are very colorful in, uh, in Rajasthan. Even some uh, of the colors are psychedelic, neon, uh, bright uh, orange, bright green. And the reason maybe is because it's very hot in Rajasthan. And this turban, also the very colorful thing, reflects the light. So maybe it keeps cool. And definitely it's very thin cloth. It's thin muslin cloth. And it's long, it's uh, you know, 15 uh, meters long, and you, some of them tie it, uh, and it becomes a big ball, <laughs> like this big. This is a small one. And uh, you can actually identify the person uh, community as well as the area, the geographic location of the person, just by looking at, even as, at, a, at a distance, you can make out. Uh, because every community, every uh, geographic area has a different style of tying it. There are thousands of styles of, of uh, the language, as well as the turbans, as well as the food. So it's a very rich and diverse area. We believe a lot in nature. And we believe that uh, in nature or in, um, in life, everyone is equal and should uh, live with peace and harmony. And we sing a lot of songs about um, this kind of uh, harmony with each other. This is an ongoing process and we hope uh, that one day a folk musician from Rajasthan wins a Grammy, wins an Oscar and there should be no reason why, it's just the correct platform. And even here with Kokorozi and uh, with uh, your recording, what you're doing, it's everything will add up one day for one of our musicians to take our music to the world stage. Party. You want 
carefully curate our whole touring party to be really lovely people and a very eclectic mix of personalities. This is definitely the biggest group we've ever had. It's going to be like 13 or 14 people. Um, and we are so excited to get on the road. That's a huge relief for me to be getting on the road. It's like everything is so simple and you're just focusing on music. We just have each other. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.